What issues are at the top of your agenda for this meeting? I think it's clear that when we see and hear what's going on in Europe right now is we have to get stabilization in many of the countries. The countries that are really struggling need to have the kind of plan that can stabilize the entire Eurozone. Once that stabilization occurs and how that's done, it will bring the momentum that's required. So it's really two things. How do we stabilize and then how do we create the momentum that's required for Europe to really drive not only productivity but of course GDP growth. With the new European leadership team brought about by the Lisbon Treaty, what can Europe do to become a more cohesive global power? When you look at the Lisbon Treaty and before that the Amsterdam Treaty and the Nice Treaty, all of those things leading up to the Lisbon Treaty, the most difficulty in that is balancing between nationalism and the Eurozone. Finding that balance is what the new team needs to do, is to really move forward and have the teeth put into the Lisbon Treaty so that the Eurozone can and should be the force within the world, not only from a currency perspective, but in the kind of products and services to the world. So the new team needs to find that balance between the nationalism and the cohesiveness in order to make the Eurozone a true global power. What does Europe, in particular the Eurozone, need to do to bounce back from its recent financial difficulties? Well, anytime you're at the depths of, of some of the most difficult kinds of downturns, the recession in this case, um, there are some of the classic ways to get out, which is just consumer spending and having some confidence from the consumer. But in this case, it's even more than that. What it is is a great pipeline that must happen of innovation, that innovation to create more product and services, not only to create the demand within the Eurozone, but for the Eurozone to really have the kind of exports required in order to fuel and fund what must happen within the Eurozone. So when it comes down to it, it's a pipeline of businesses and it's a pipeline of products and services, both of those having a very innovative approach. What needs to be done to ensure that businesses get rules and regulations that are simple, transparent, and can be easily understood and adhered to? I spoke earlier about that balance between nationalism and, and the unification and cohesiveness. And when you try to, to, to take both of those, and address both of those, what can happen is, is that you, you put way too much into the structure and therefore what you have is more rules and regulations and companies and countries for that matter almost opt out in a tacit sort of way. What they do is they pull back because of the complexity. So if the premise is to create action and we keep that in mind as we're creating the rules and regulations, we can leave a few things out. We can understand that there'll be some fringe on the margin that maybe isn't, isn't as tight as it should be, but what it creates is the simplicity that creates action. So as, we're, as, 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 the, uh, as the treaty is being developed further and as rules are coming out, if the propensity is for action, I think we, we can and will keep it simple.